Hello again. I'm back for another ministry video. It's all ministry all the time. One after another. People can't get enough. Or I can't get enough. That much I know. But why not? Why not break down every little thing ministry did in the 80s? Because it all should be celebrated. I did my With Sympathy video earlier, and uh, now I'm just going to move right along into their next phase, into Al Jorgensen's next phase, which is the Twitch phase. But first, there was a pre-Twitch phase, post With Sympathy phase, I think. And he, after With Sympathy came out, I think he was burned out and pissed off. And like I covered in the With Sympathy video, Arista Records sort of tried to mold Al into this new wave hero and he made an album that he wasn't proud of and and he shirked other ideas of music that he wanted to incorporate into his sound like more industrial punk type sounds and it was still there if you listen closely to With Sympathy, With Sympathy it's still there but it's lacking and Al covers this in many, many different interviews, but he was never happy with, with sympathy. He felt forced. He felt like he was being put upon by the record label to produce an album that wasn't him. And it's interesting. He In one interview, I remember watching with him and Dave Kendall, those of you who watched 120 Minutes back in the 80s, he had an interview with Dave Kendall, and he said, yeah, I sold out when I started, which was interesting. And he said it with a wink and a smile and that sarcasm that we know and love with Al. But uh, he basically was acknowledging that he felt like he sold out when he started. So he this was the this was the time where I think Al started truly becoming what he is now. The the you know the 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 beginning of that that time he was starting to kind of evolve what would become his metal techno sound that he perfected in the late 80s, early 90s. And after with Sympathy, I, he regrouped and, and decided that he was going to put his stuff out on Wax Tracks Records, which gave him some freedom. He didn't have that big record label contract looming over his head. So he had a lot of artistic freedom there. And after with Sympathy, he put this out. This was his first single after with Sympathy. Every day is Halloween. And I I think I think this is as early as as far back as as Al goes now on his in his concerts. I don't think he performs any song live that is earlier than this on the calendar. I think Halloween is as early as as far back as he goes. And this is also the original pressing. There was a later pressing that had a hole here in the middle. Um, that's that's the way you can tell the original pressing, which is this one. It, just, it does not have a hole, as opposed to the repress that does have a hole. And the ones with the hole, I think essentially the record label, that's how they saved money. It's less paper if you have a hole here. So um, I think when they repressed it, they just wanted to save a little bit of money. Anyway... This is the original press. It has a little cut corner here. This was just to denote that it was a promo back in the day. Um, DJs got these. You weren't supposed to sell these if they had these kinds of marks on them. Of course, everybody sold these. 25% of my entire record collection are all promos. DJs would pick them up. Uh, as I mentioned before in an earlier video, I was a DJ for years, although this predates me. This came out in 19... Was it 84? 84 or 85 was when this record came out. I want to say 84. Pretty sure this first came out in 84, then the repress came out in 85. Anyway, I think most ministry fans know this song. This is considered a classic ministry song, and, and this is the first time he really sort of ex started exercising that synth pop meets industrial type of noise that he perfected. Halloween is a really great it's a great song i don't i don't blame him for performing it now i think he does more acoustic versions of it now and more metal versions of it now but this one's pretty much you know it's it's pretty much synth pop it does have that industri industrial twang to it it has an edge to it that with sympathy most definitely does not have 
but it's it's got some some really amazing lyrics. Al's vocals are he's on top of his game. The production here is really solid. And yeah, again, I think a lot of ministry fans would would point to this as one of their favorite ministry releases. And I don't blame them. It's not it wouldn't be in my list if I had to do a top 5. I don't know that I would put this in there, but it's a great song all the same. It's really cool. And it's a single only. Uh never released on an album. This is a standalone single only. And uh, yeah, there you go. Original copy of Every Day is Halloween. Backed up by the nature of outtakes, which leads me to the next release here, which is the nature of love. Let me take this out of the, I, I think maybe these are causing some glare, maybe hard to see the record when these are on the jackets. But anyway, this is nature of love. This came out in 1985. And, you know, I think, I, I think Halloween came out before this. I mean, the Nature of Outtakes is a remix of the Nature of Love. So that's what makes me feel like maybe Nature of Love came first. Because why would there be a remix on this of a song that no one had heard? You know what I mean? Wouldn't the Nature of Love in its original form be on this if it came out before this? And anyway, who knows? He probably had all these songs knocking around at the same time and he released them months apart. Anyway, this came out within a year of Halloween, Nature of Love. This is a cool song. This isn't one of his songs that has dated as well, in my opinion. This has got two tracks, the original and then the Cruelty mix. Both different than the Nature of Outtakes remakes you get here on the Halloween record. Sorry for all the feline activity around me. As soon as I start talking, the cats go fucking crazy. Anyway, Nature of Love, 1985. Here it is. Good song, not his best. But again, in that line of industrial synth pop weirdness, it, 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 the Cruelty mix and the Nature of Outtakes remix are really bizarre. I remember listening to it as a kid, and there are these... Al takes his voice and samples it and loops it and changes the speed. It's a very strange mix. It's a weird song. It's not as... It definitely is far from his most commercial song. Um, it's weird. One of Al's weirder songs. Was, in, in terms of his early work, it's a big departure from what he was doing with, with Sympathy. Just very experimental, even in the synth-pop world. Just weird. A track that only Al could produce and deliver. And then this came quickly after that. This is All Day. This has a yellow cover. Um, this came out, I've seen them in red and blue and green. In fact, I have one on green. And I don't know where that one is. This is the one I could find. This is the one on yellow, obviously. Oh, and of course, these all came with uh, the Wax Tracks catalog that I showed with the With Sympathy video. They all come with Wax Tracks catalogs, but this is all day. This later would pop up on the Twitch album, which I'll get to here in a minute. This is a great song. Of the three singles here, this is my favorite. He was definitely evolving his sound. And also on the B side, you have a... Um, a remix of Every Day's Halloween. It's more of like an edited down version. The, the version on the 12 inch is like 10 minutes long. This is mo a more economical six and a half minute version of Halloween. Both versions of on here of All Day and Halloween are fantastic stuff. Al definitely is just, he's furthering that, you know, evolution of sound that he started post with sympathy he just keeps getting better a little more edgy a little more weird but more intense more driven the guy has a vision man and this came out in 1985 and people were getting excited with this al jorgensen fella great song and that leads me to the album twitch let me take this out of here twitch now this album means a lot to me, not just not just in the realm of ministry Al Jorgensen records, but just in records, period. This came out, I think, in 1986. Yes, 1986. And I was a kid when I first... This was my introduction to ministry. This is the first thing I ever heard from them, Twitch. 
I haven't heard anything before any of these records I just discussed, anything I talked about in my earlier with Sympathy video. Haven't heard any of that. Ground zero for me was this record right here. So it means a lot to me. There's only one other Ministry album that I like more, which is the album they put after this, Al Jorgensen put out after this, which I will definitely talk about in detail. But this would be my second favorite. This album is a real milestone in industrial music. And I would, I would definitely defy anybody, like people with well-known names like Trent Reznor or even Rob Zombie or any of those guys, I would defy them to disagree with me. I think those guys definitely heard this record and definitely were taking note and definitely copying Al. There are many copyists of Al, as we all know, and this was the start of it. This is a really phenomenal piece of work. This was produced by the great Adrian Sherwood. Those of you who don't know who Adrian Sherwood is, please go check him out. Adrian Sherwood, I've even heard J Jorgensen say this himself, Adrian Sherwood pretty much taught Al how to produce his albums from the mid-late 80s. Adrian Sherwood is a producer extraordinaire. He is amazing talent. Still around. He was known in the 80s as, he was a post-punk guy, but he made dub music, he made disco music, uh, rock music, ambient music. This guy is awesome. Adrian Sherwood. Check him out. He recorded under On You Sound. He did tons of different remixes. I think I've brought him up briefly in the past. He, his name is all over tons of records in the 80s. He's all over the place. But anyway, he produced this. Twitch. This is Al, by the way. This weird demonic vision right here. That's Al. I think they were doing some promotional shoot for a video or something and they covered Al with powder and he was making faces and this this was the result of it. And it's also on also on the cover of the single that was released from this album which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, this this album really flows. It every song on here there's not a bad track on here. Every song leads into something more interesting and more unique and it just it's a real progressive album in its most base ter base term it is an excellent testament of how synth pop shifted and this is pretty much when al started doing his thing that we all know and love today now this is the very the very beginning of it you're not going to hear any you're not going to hear any metal influences necessarily here but the edge and the intensity and the weirdness and the madness definitely start on this album. It starts off with Just Like You, which is one of his best tracks. We Believe comes after that. All Day Remix. I don't know. It's really not much of a remix. It's almost the exact same version as you find here. In fact, it sounds like the same version to me. But that's no bad thing. All Day is a great song. The Angel then ends the first side. The Angel is top five ministry songs for me. Beautiful song. You flip it over, you have Over the Shoulder, the weak point of the album, in my opinion. Still a good song, but compared to all the rest of the songs, probably the worst track on here, which of course was, was the single for the album. That's usually how it happens. You take the most accessible, catchy tune on there and you turn it into a single. Followed by My Possession, and then there's a trio of songs that kind of work together as the last song. It's Where You At Now, Crash and Burn, and Twitch. It's three tracks all kind of melded into one. It's a 12 and a half minute weird industrial dance jam. And again, those of you who know Adrian Sherwood know what I'm talking about. That's a very Adrian Sherwood-y song. Um, here's the inner sleeve. Some weird, bizarre, and um, this was his. This was his first album on Sire as well. You can see the Sire logo there. This is a good pressing, by the way. Sire always did a really nice job in in the in the '80s when, with their pressing, and you know, Sire had tons of bands, and they usually took their pressings very seriously. And 
Um, I think this has been re-released somewhere. I don't know who. I thought I saw a repress of it somewhere, but why would you buy that if you can buy the original press here? I don't know. What, I don't necessarily know what this is going for now. I don't. I, I, this was pretty. This was mass produced. I can't imagine this is too hard to find. But oh, produced by Adrian Sherwood. Pay attention to that shit. Fantastic album. When I was a kid in the mid 80s and I picked this album up, this changed me. I had never heard music like this and nor had anybody else. It's easy to go back and, you know, it's easy to listen to this album and then not be able to go back and understand the, the context of the time and of which it was released. But I ask you to do that. Go back to 1985 and listen to other records and electronic albums and new wave records. And then listen to this. It's, of course, music like this is everywhere now. But this album is, what, 36 years old now? You know, music didn't exist like this back in the mid-80s. So this was a real bomb when it dropped. Real good stuff. People loved it. There just wasn't anything out there that, that sounded like this. And for me, who was a kid in middle school, to hear this, it was quite... It was quite a life moment, and I'll never forget it. I can still remember listening to this album when I was a kid, and it blew my fucking mind. It was very, very intense. And it definitely opened up my mind and my attitudes toward more progressive and experimental music. And in the pantheon of Al Jorgensen records, this is, again, this is my second favorite. There's only one record that I like more than this, and that's the album he put out after this. I'll get to that in another video. Doesn't get much better than this, folks. Do yourself a favor and check this out if you've never heard Twitch. It is a phenomenal piece of work. So to end this, uh, I'll talk about this. This is the, this is the one single that came out from With Sympathy. This is Over the Shoulder. Or as Al would sing it, Over the shoulder. I forgot to talk about this in the With Sympathy video, by the way. Al took on some weird affectation. He had a, with his first couple of records, he had this fake British accent. Um, yeah, listen to this song if you haven't heard it. It's Ova the Shauda. And I, I read Al Jorgensen's biography, which, autobiography, which you should read. It's amazing. But he's, a, he's Cuban, and I think he, when he was young, he was trying to lose his Cuban accent, and he was adopting different vo voices and styles, and I think that might have been a byproduct of him trying to find his own voice. Also, With Sympathy was promoted heavily in Europe, so I think maybe when he was promoting it in Europe, he picked up this weird accent. Anyway, if you listen to With Sympathy, and particularly this, you will hear this weird really hilarious fake British accent that Al is trying to adopt. It made me think the, earlier when I was putting these records together too, like Al was ahead of his time in everything. You remember in the mid nineties when Madonna started doing that shit, she moved to England and she married Guy Ritchie and all of a sudden she became sophisticated and all of a sudden she adopted a highfalutin British accent and I'm no longer Madonna. I'm Madonna. Even Al was before her on that. Al is so ahead of his time. He was making music that was years ahead of his time. He even faked British accents ahead of his time. I mean, how forward thinking can one guy be? Anyway, it made me think of Madonna and Al did it much better. Let's just face it. Madonna or Al? Who are you gonna give the nudge to? Yeah, exactly, Al. Here he is again right here, covered in his powder. There's a cool video to this too, which was uh, directed by Peter Christofferson of Coil. I assume most of you know who Coil is if you're watching this video. If you don't, check out Coil. But Christofferson, he was in a group called Throbbing Gristle. He then started making videos. He's got a whole history himself. Go check him out. Check out Coil. Definitely check out Throbbing Gristle if you haven't done that. Two bands that directly influenced Al, for sure. No doubt about it. But anyway, the video is cool. This 12-inch has an extended remix 
of Over the Shoulder. It's not really a remix. It's just like an extra minute of beats. You know, back then they didn't really remix stuff. It was edits. You know, they would tack on an extra beat loop in the middle or in the beginning and they'd call it a remix. So it is a little longer than the album version, but not by much. Then the B-sides are Isle of Men and then Twitch version two. Both very brief songs, but cool. If you're a ministry fan, you want to have this. I can't imagine this is too hard to find. Excellent companion piece to Twitch. But this mid-80s era was really exciting for Uncle Al because of this. This album sounded really fresh then, and remarkably so, it still sounds fresh today. I mean, I haven't listened to it in a couple months, but I've heard this enough to know that this still sounds fresh, okay? This came out in 1985. There are still bands out there trying to sound industrial and, you know, trying to marry that synth pop sound with industrial intensity, and no one does it as well as this. This. I'm assuming a lot of you have heard this if you're watching the video, and if you have, go listen to this again, because you know how fucking awesome this record is. And even for shits and giggles, why don't you adopt a fake British accent? It worked for Al, it can work for you too. It's a little annoying, but when you know Al did it, it makes it even better, more acceptable. And so much better than the way Madonna did it. But let's not end on Madonna. Let's end on the greatness of ministry, the greatness of Halloween, the greatness of nature of love. All day. Over the shoulder. And Twitch. There's only one period of time where Al was better. And it was directly after this. And I'll talk about that in the next video. But as of right now, these are the records you've got to check out. Buy them, enjoy them, and until next time, thanks for joining me.